And welcome back. We're in a new section of the Quran. We're in Nur or Light in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Uh, there's a surprise coming for y'all, but at the end of January. So hang in there. Okay, I don't want to give you too many clues about what it is, but I'm super excited about it. Okay, we're on uh, sign one. A surah which we have sent down and which we have ordained, in it have we sent down clear signs, in order that ye may receive admonition. The woman and the man guilty of adultery or fornication, flog each of them with a hundred stripes. Let not compassion move you in their case, in matter prescribed by Allah. If ye believe in Allah and the last day, and let partly of the believers witness their punishment. Okay, I already know. This is going to be a controversial video, okay? Because I'm going to give my statement on this. And you're going to be surprised. So, I'm just going to let it hang out there. I'm going to be honest. This is going to... I think that if there was more punishments for cheating, people would cheat less, right? Hear me out. Now, this is not saying that you should be abusive. This is not saying mob justice, okay? But I'm going to give you an example. And it's going to be kind of a... Uh, it's a brutal example, and I'm not afraid to admit my mistakes. But I once was with somebody, it was a long time ago, like 12 years ago, and I texted to a guy, I said, like, I want to ride the bus with you. And I didn't delete the message out of my phone. And he was like, a, he worked in a restaurant, uh, very close to the restaurant I worked at. And he was super handsome, and he was single, and I wasn't, but I wanted to leave the person I was with, but I just hadn't done it yet, right? I was dipping my toes with the thought of adultery, right? So I didn't delete that out of my phone and I was hanging out on the couch and the guy I was dating at that time came home early and I had my phone out and I was like scrolling through something and he's like, let me see your phone. And he snatched my phone away and then he went looking in my text and he saw it and uh, long story short, there was a physical altercation and this is not to say that women should hit men and men should hit women. But what I did learn from that experience was don't assume just because you're a woman that you can cheat without consequences. Because I have been cheated on and I have gone nuts on that person who has cheated, right? Because I know I'm a jealous lover and that's a bit of hypocrisy in me, right? I wanted to have my cake and eat it too. And What's even more crazy is I once beat up a girl's sister because the guy I was dating liked her, right? That is so stupid, but I was in high school and you know, you don't know nothing in high school. You're, you're pretty much, you're learning and the world is still weird, right? So I've had experiences where I have been the aggressor on somebody who like, I was dishonored by the man and I got revenge on somebody who you know, didn't exactly deserve it, right? I should have just left that person. But I've also been the bad one and gotten into a physical altercation. So with that being said, today, I think, is it worth the consequence that could come? Is it worth the physical violence that could come? Is it worth the headache that's going to come from it? Is that person who I want to commit adultery with worth all the drama for the 10 minutes of booty. Is it really worth it? It's not. So I'll do that. Mm, disengage. And I think once we women and men in general, right, start thinking like that, a lot less people would cheat. If there was actual consequences beyond just seeing the person cry. And if you've cheated on that person, seeing them cry is not going to really do a whole lot. Right? And uh, some people will disagree with me. I know a lot of my friends right now, if they heard what I said, they'd be like, oh my god, like, marriage is just not real, like, we're not meant to just have one person, like, oh my god, like, how can you say that? <laughs> I already know, I already know, so, say what you want, but we have to, you know, this is accountability, I'm not saying, you know, that you need to, if you catch them, you need to do something, but there are tons of women who they themselves cheat, but when their men cheat, they key the guy's car, they kill his dog, they do terrible, crazy, they stalk him at his work, they send him like thousands of texts, they go berserk, even though they themselves are guilty, right? 
And then what's even sadder is when men cheat on their wives, they catch their woman cheating, and then they beat up the guy. And it's like, okay, we're getting into a really weird world here where we're doing what we want, but then when someone does what we do, we hurt them with physical violence. So now I think before I ever get tempted, right? If before anyone tries to tempt me, I think, was it worth the consequences? Am I going to... Is, it, is this person's, you know, 10 minute of booty going to be worth the days and months and let's say legal fees? Like if you get into a fight and you got to go to court, is it worth all that drama? If not, well, you know, might as well just be single or separate with the person you're with and then date that other person. And if they're not willing to wait for you and they just want to wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you know, dip it and dive then you have to consider if is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? And do you want to be worrying about all these secrets? I don't know. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone gets tempted and falls short. But let's just say from now on, starting today, we all think about what can really happen. So when I see a verse like this, right? To the really far left feminists who are social justice warriors, politically correct, they go insane, they'll see this and be like, oh my god, I'm triggered. But honestly, to me, it's like, okay, if you knew there's going to be some severe consequences for cheating, it makes you totally change the way in which you look at that person, right? If I knew, if I saw a guy who's just perfect and I thought, you know what, if I get caught, there's just going to be too much drama. I might not even do it. It's like, you know what? I most likely am not going to do it. Let's just put it that way. So I'm not going to be outraged at a verse like this because f adultery causes so much damage in a relationship and the children suffer, especially if there's kids. You can never really get back to a relationship once you've cheated. It is a problem. Every time you look at that person, you, th you imagine them kissing and performing with another person, it drives you crazy. And it's so hard to get those images out of your head. It can drive you mad. I mean, I've been driven mad. Like just that poor, I feel bad. If I could take it back, I would. I wish I would've never beat up that girl. I beat her up really bad. And it was just like, why did I do that? Because of the guy and it didn't stop him from cheating. And I left him anyways. So it's like, but I wanted justice. I wanted the, my pride and my anger. And I, I was like, this was mine. And someone else got their fingers into my cookie jar, right? So I think, you know, we women and men, just humans in general, really have to look at this verse and think about what can happen, you know? That person that you cheated with could also have a lover and they could come and, you know, ruin your life as well. I don't know, family, so I'm not going to be too outraged at a verse like this. Say what you want. I could tell you more and more stories about why I'm not outraged at this verse. But, okay, let's say that you don't really get flogged. You'll get the crap beaten out of you by that person's lover, most likely. Most likely. And if you don't, God has blessed you. Because most people are very possessive over their lovers. Um, I'll never harm another woman like that unless I came home and I caught them in the act. Then someone's going to get something. But if the person comes to me and says, hey, I want to separate. I've, uh, you know, fallen in love with someone else or I'm interested in someone else. It's like it burns. It hurts. It Oh, it's so horrible. You're like, okay. yeah, I guess this is just what it has to be. Don't hold on to something that don't want to hold on to you. That's how I look at it. So. I don't know. I would like to know what you think about this. And let's be nice to each other, okay? Because it's a tense topic. Okay? It's a tense topic. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, sign three. Let no man guilty of adultery or fornication marry any but a woman similarly guilty or an unbeliever. Nor let any but such a man or unbeliever marry such a woman. To the believer, such a thing is forbidden. And those who launch a charge against chaste women and produce not four witnesses to support their allegations, flog them with 80 stripes and reject their evidence ever after. For such men are wicked transgressors. Yeah, some people can, uh, can lie or bury the lead. You know, you just never know. You gotta, you gotta have some evidence. 
even though some things are done in shadows with whispers, you still gotta have some evidence, right? Unless they repent thereafter and mend their conduct, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Now here's the thing. I think if you, I think what this is making me think of, if you have cheated in the past, I think you can, to a degree, change your behavior. But it depends on what's causing you to cheat. Is it just lust? Or is it that you keep seeking this emotional connection and each person you have, you're kind of stuck with them financially uh, and they're not fulfilling you, so your mind naturally wanders. And is it that, you know, or are you cheating because you enjoy the number count? You enjoy, oh, I've had X amount of lovers. Or I had this one, I had that one, I had this one. Uh, a flavor from every country, from every state, from every city. What are the reasons behind cheating? I think it can tell you a lot if that's going to stop. So it's true, God will always forgive you. But if someone is a chronic cheater, no amount of sexiness will ever make them change. I really don't think so. If someone loves being a player, I think that after a certain amount of, you've had over like a hundred different women, I think after a certain point, your body becomes numb to the pleasures of women and you'll never be satisfied with a woman who's aging and you'll always be chasing skirts. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little nihilistic, pessimistic, but I don't, I don't think it's wrong for a religious person not to want to be with a chronic cheater or someone who used to be a chronic cheater, right? For example, I'm going to give another personal example. I knew this one guy, he wanted to date me, he was super handsome, but he was with a woman for six years and then he told me he cheated on her and he cheated on her a lot after, you know, she went and traveled to see her family in Mexico and I was like, ain't no way. If you've, if, if you've cheated on your wife that many times, I'm supposed to think that me as your girlfriend, you're not going to cheat on me and she's the mother of one of your kids? I'm cool. No. No, I don't think so at all. It's amazing how we women are getting fooled too much and certain men are getting fooled too much, right? They see uh, the chicks in the music videos, the gold diggers, and think that those chicks won't cheat on you. And what's even more sad is some women see these 50 cent, you know, G-unit gangster boys and they think that those men will stay loyal. I don't know. We have to think about it. So I'm not mad at the Quran for stating facts. Hate it or leave it. I don't know. And six, and for those who launch a charge against their spouses and have in support no evidence but their own, their solitary evidence can be received if they bear witness four times with an oath by Allah that they are solemnly telling the truth. And the fifth oath should be that they solemnly invoke the curse of Allah on themselves if they tell a lie. I don't see nothing wrong with that. But it would avert the punishment from the wife if she bears witness four times with an oath by Allah and that her husband is telling a lie. And the fifth oath should be that she solemnly invokes the wrath of Allah on herself if her accuser is telling the truth. If, if it were not for Allah's grace and mercy on you that Allah is off returning, full of wisdom, ye would be ruined indeed. I'm not mad at it. Hate it or leave it, I'm not mad at it. Oops, sorry, almost knocked over my computer, sorry. Those who brought forward the lie are body among yourselves, think it not to be an evil to you. On the contrary, it is good for you. To every man among them will come the punishment of the sin that he earned. And to him he took on himself the lead among them will be a penalty grievous. Why did not the believers, men and women, when ye heard of the affair, put the best construction on it in their own minds and say, this charge is an obvious lie. Why did they not bring four witnesses to prove it? When they have not brought the witnesses, such men in the sight of Allah will stand forth themselves as liars. A lot of cheating is done behind doors, so it is super hard to get a witness. But, uh, I think that's harder for people who wear a, like a full-on veil, right? You can't see who they are, so it's harder to find out they're cheating. But if you're letting your partner go to the club and there's just like, and he's just getting it on and then he all of a sudden your partner's drunk, you didn't go with them to the club and they're making out with someone in the corner, there's going to be at least four witnesses, right? In clubs, that's where usually most of the cheating occurs. In the bathroom, behind the building outside, 
in the parking lot or in the corners of the club where there might be where it cuts off from the VIP section. So in those cases, you can find witnesses. And if you live in a small village or a small town where everyone knows each other, there most likely will be witnesses there. If you're getting in the car with someone, they're picking you up from work. There's lots of ways you can get witnesses. Uh, but if some people are very clever and it can be very hard. So I can see how that'd be hard for the for the person who's being falsely accused, you know? And you know, also you can get a, for at least four people to lie, you know? That's another sad thing is some people will lie for their friends. 14. Were it not for the grace and mercy of Allah on you in this world and the hereafter, a grievous penalty would have saved you in that ye rush give glibly into the affair. Yeah, some people really do rush glibly into the affair. It's, it's scary. Behold, ye received it on your tongues, and set out of your mouths things of which ye had no knowledge, and ye thought it to be a light matter, while it was most serious in the sight of Allah. And why did ye not, when ye heard it say, Is it not right of us to speak of this glory to Allah? This is a most serious slander. Allah doth admonish you, that ye may never repeat such conduct, if ye are true believers. And Allah makes the sign plain the signs plain to you, for Allah is full of knowledge and wisdom. Those who love to see scandal published broadcast among the believers will have grievous penalty in this life and in the hereafter. Oh, so uh gossip. Allah knows and ye know not. Were it not for the grace and mercy of Allah on you, and that Allah is full of kindness and mercy, ye would be ruined indeed. Yeah, that is so true. Is so true. Wow. So tell me what you think, family. We read a very controversial verse. I mean, for some. It's only controversial in my view if you don't take a step back and look at it. There's a whole TV show called Snapped. It's like an old TV show. I don't even know if there's even seasons of it anymore. But it's a whole TV series in America about women and men who went nuts and killed their partner because of cheating or something similar. They might have changed the plot as uh, it went on because they probably ran out of ideas. But there are some episodes where you can see the craziness of what people do to each other when they cheat. So we can be quick to judge the Muslims for having this in their book. But at the same time, those same people criticizing probably get a kick out of watching TV shows like that. I'm just saying. Or they themselves cheat and know, I don't want to be flogged. I just want to do things and not feel any consequence. And a crying isn't a consequence. Separating isn't a consequence. I don't know. And I did watch this movie called The Stoning of Saraye or something like that. And it was a super sad movie about a woman who was falsely accused and she was stoned to death. And it was very sad. And indeed, we don't want things like that happening right but at the same time i understand where that's coming from of like the emphasis of consequences for your actions because some people oh my god i knew a person uh who told me that one of their in-laws committed suicide after they found out that their partner cheated and they left a three-year-old little girl behind she's probably four now that was a year ago the lady committed suicide. She, she she found out her partner was cheating and she killed herself. Shot her, she took a gun, put it under here, blew her brains out. Now her sweet little girl has no mother. So think about that. So when we say, what's the big deal with cheating? It's some people won't care. Me, maybe I'm a little salty now. My pride and honor is gonna be hurt. But because I've been the bad one, and because I've had it done to me, I feel like I have more of a shield up to where I'm like, I'll just let it go. But there are some new people to the world of love who've never had that kind of pain. And no one can predict how you're going to react. No one can predict that. So it's a scary thing. And if we had more fear to commit adultery, less people would be traumatized. And so many people get cheated on, they become players. And then those players, we call them, right? They go around breaking hearts. 
right? They go around breaking hearts and making more people more crazy and creating more chaos. So it's a ripple effect. The cheating, sometimes you can get away with it where no one gets hurt and you carry that secret to the grave. And if that happens, you were blessed and be thankful, but try not to do it again because there can be severe consequences, really. For example, I'm gonna give another one quick before the, the computer freezes. I once dated this, well, I went on a date with a guy. I went on and I took my friend with me. So he, my friend and her, we were both, me and her, we went on a date with this guy to eat breakfast. And we took a picture, he put it in his phone, right? I didn't think anything. I guess his, he had a wife and a child and she called me and was like, I saw a picture of you in my man's phone. Are you dating my man? I was like, nah, we went on one date. Oh my gosh. And she's like, he doesn't pay child support. Uh, we live together, but he doesn't pay any support for his kid. And we're planning on separating. And he still is not wanting to pay child support. Uh, and she was asking me all these personal questions. I don't want to say any too much of her business. God bless her. But I was like, this is a terrible feeling. This is a terrible feeling. Like, I had no idea. But his his woman is calling me. Right? And I was like, nah. And after that, I cut it off. Thank God it was just breakfast and that was it. But it is not cool. It is not cool, man. It's not cool to get that phone call. I've had so much life experience with relationships. It's crazy. And I've learned from each of them. And I can understand verses like this in a different way because I've been on both sides. And it's a mess. And that's why I think if we took adultery more seriously we wouldn't do it as easily and you know less people would engage in it but it's hard to say in a culture like America that has hookup culture that has tinder that has apps I mean we've all most of us have all had a tinder profile and you delete it you don't pay attention to it but I'm saying the people who actually have used it right or you know it's not eHarmony that's what I'm trying to say so I don't know family let me know what you think this is a very controversial video but Let's be adults and think about it, you know? Let's really be adults and think before we comment and let's not attack each other and be mean to each other. Let's try to learn from each other and learn from the Quran. I don't know, family, let me know.